of spirit that Levius embodied carried with it a rare idealism. Levius had very passionate beliefs and a deep philosophical commitment to architecture. He often spoke of the importance of ideas and of understanding our world. I remember Levius saying, well, what is architecture for? And did not yet recognize the heroism involved when a practitioner must build a route and a pathway to the outside to fashion one's own exile, as, for example, did James Joyce from one's home and field in order, as Joyce always used to say, in order to be able to create in an unfettered, spontaneous, and uncompromising manner. And this is Levius' words. It seems to me, if architects really want to resist, then neither the idea nor the rhetoric of resistance has a place in it. Rather, they must create an independent idea of architecture and the world. I came very profoundly to appreciate Levius' remarkable offering to the architectural imagination. As Nietzsche taught, build your house on the side of a volcano. A kind of battle cry to commit to existence. To commit to an insecurity that could not fail to drive an infinitely creative life. As young, resistant, and ambitious producers of culture, so many of us recited this phrase, yet so few, in fact really, probably none at all, ever found the courage to make it real. Levius did, and for that he both inspired moments of terror and also served for all of us as a beacon. Resist whatever seems inevitable. Resist people who seem invincible. Resist any idea that contains the word algorithm. Resist the impulse to draw blob shapes. Resist the desire to travel to Paris in the spring. Resist the desire to move to Los Angeles anytime. Resist the idea that architecture is a building. Resist the idea that architecture can save the world. Resist the hope that you'll get that big job. Resist getting jobs. Resist taking the path of least resistance. Resist anyone who asks you to design only the visible part. Resist the idea that you need a client to make architecture. Resist the temptation to talk fast. Love it, love it, love it. Just, uh, brings us back to his even more foundational Nietzschean manner, his love and incredible commitment to the untimely, to the positions, the ethics, the physical forms that are utterly outside of one's own time and which serve as seeds and placeholders for another time soon to come. In a text he once wrote, I know only moments. He recognized only the reality of transition, of passage, crisis, and the awkward, brilliant moments of sublime opportunity that these and only these presented. He was launched into orbit on October 30th by a thousand mile long storm and now travels on a beam of light of his own invention. Everything he did, every ounce of work, was toward the imagination and construction of a worldly city. And through that endlessly imagined city, a soul.